Go to Genesis 1. What a great word Eric brought to us last week. Hallelujah. <laughs> Put God in the game. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. This morning, I want to continue talking about just this thing that's in my heart, growing in my heart. Because, I mean, like Eric said, it's all about continuing with the word that our founder gave us. Progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, seeing our highest expectations fulfilled. And the warnings that he gave us were, you know, uh, stay in faith, remain focused on the promises, and don't be distracted. You know, some of you in here, you, you've, you're facing things. You're going through things, and um, what I want to encourage you with is the fact that to tell you by the Spirit of God, it's a distraction. It's just a distraction. It's just a, a distraction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes on His plan. Keep your eyes on His plan. Keep your eyes on His purpose. Mm. Hallelujah. So we step into this year as a church. I believe it's a year where we'll be empowered to fulfill God opportunities. Amen. Fulfilling God opportunities is about taking ground. Amen. It's about advancing kingdom. Amen. And the result of this, about these divine opportunities, will be about bringing people to a place of repentance, Amen. transformation in the church to be glorious. Some definitions of opportunity. Opportunities are, an opportunity is an occasion that makes it possible to do something you always desire to do. Some of you have desired to do some great things, but there's some things holding you back. Fear will hold you back. Shame will hold you back. Condemnation will hold you back. Wrong perception will hold you back. Another definition is a favorable combination of circumstances, time, and place. I like this. I like, and the way I put on the other side of that is it's actually stepping into God's plan. Because when, when you, there's a favorable combination of circumstances, time, and place, next thing you know, you're in the plan. You're in the plan. That's what an opportunity is. But we're not talking about just, just any opportunity. We're talking about God opportunities. Another definition is the chance to better yourself and others. In other Webster's it, uh, dictionary, it says it's a favorable time of purpose. A favorable time of purpose. Mm. Let's look at Genesis here. I, I don't want to do too much review from past weeks. I just want to be led by the Holy Spirit as I minister the word today. But in Genesis 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. God wasn't confused. Lord, I said, I'm not here to please people, but at the same time, my heart isn't to offend people's hearts either. I mean, most of you know my heart. You know my heart. I'm not an idiot. I'm not stupid. I'm not deceived. Lord, have you all voted yet? <laughs> I think it's amazing. If you haven't, you understand voting is your duty. And you're like, well, I don't know if, if Jesus would have really voted if he walked the earth. Well, well, according to paying taxes, taxes are a duty. And he said, whatever you owe Caesar, pay Caesar. Because Jesus knew it was a duty. And as a United States citizen, you have a duty to vote. You have a duty. It's a, it's a right and a privilege of a free nation.
You know, sometimes I think when we look, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, voting can cause so much division between people and churches, and I, and and it is ridiculous the way the enemy will use it. We have there's more than two two parties, but two primary parties, and I think sometimes we have this mindset when we're going to the voting booth is I heard someone say it like this that I'm handing whoever I'm voting for a Valentine Day card. Like, I love you, I love you. Like, I'm asking this person to marry me. And it's this, it's like putting this person on a pedestal or putting this person on a pedestal. But the thing is, it's not about the two people. And that's what people try to make this all about is about personalities. When this has to do with principalities. What's ha- this has to do with principalities. And when I say certain things, especially about, about certain platforms, I can't go with this platform because I cannot support abortion. Spe- late term abor- abortion, I cannot do that. So I have to, I, so I can't look at a personality. I have to understand the principality that's at work in our nation. This is, not, this is not a personality contest. This is a principle. And I have a hard time voting for a platform. Now, listen this, this. That want to let women choose, but don't even know how to define woman. Can't even, can't even, well, we don't, we don't want to offend anybody on saying what a woman is. That lets me know, we all talk about believing the science, did you take biology class? <laughs> and I have a hard time voting for a platform when, when, when part of the only success they had as a DA in California was they were allowing inmates who are in death row to get sex changes and for the government to pay for it. I have a hard time with that. Like I said, the, it, it, put, put aside platforms, person, put aside personalities. Let's just look at things. I'm so grateful we live in the state of Texas. There, there are some states, some of the things that have gone through in the education system, we're trying to exalt gender ideologies over arithmetic. We can't, we, the, the, I can't go there and knowing scripture and knowing what God's plan is for life just because I don't like a personality. Can't do that. Can't do that. I mean, eight years old, talking to children about gender ideology and not having to tell their parents. And you're like, oh, that's just conspiracy. No, it's not. It's true. Things that have happened in the school boards, things that happen. Uh, most people don't realize this, but in 2008... The city of Fort Worth passed a law that you could go to any restroom room you wanted to go into. They did it. Happened in city council. So most people look at all the the federal elections. You have to look at the local elections too. And no one knew anything about it. And all of a sudden people were arguing about it. But yet city of Fort Worth, it was a law as of 2008. Because no one went to the city council meetings to find out what they were voting on. We have, to, we have to set a standard as believers. And I'm not talking about the personalities. Put that aside. Let, let's just look at the platforms. The platforms. And look, my heart, if you've had an abortion, that's not to make anyone feel condemnation. The mercy of God extends towards you. I mean, as a church, as the church, the church. We have to be a voice. And how our voice is heard is through our voting. And I could go on and on and share other things with you, share statistics, share things that, man. We have God opportunities. 
See, we, we were created in God's image, in his likeness. And we were to, we were to multiply, we were to multiply, increase the earth, and it said subdue it. Meaning, meaning too often Christians have sit on the sideline and we're not subduing anything. Right. Hebrews eleven thirty three it says through faith they subdued kingdoms. Yes. Most of the time we like want to use our faith for, for our own personal prosperity. But according to Hebrews eleven thirty three they were using their faith to subdue kingdoms. See, your faith was meant to be more about you. It was about taking ground and taking territory. It was, it, was about, it was about bringing God into every avenue of life, every aspect of life. He blessed them. The blessing was for them to increase and the dominion were, was for them to rule. You know, when Adam and Eve were created in the garden, it, Psalms 8 tells us, Vic, that they were clothed in glory and honor. Glory and honor. You know, what, what are, you gonna look, what are we going to look like in heaven? Glory and honor. I mean, that, that's what they were clothed with. They were crowned with glory and honor. The enemy, when he saw what he saw in heaven, in the earth, because he already wanted to exalt his throne above God's throne, and he wants the glory. That's what Satan, after, Satan wants the glory. He wants the honor. That's why he said, I will exalt my throne above the most high. I will do, 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 put myself in the sides of the throne. I will do this. And God said, no, you won't. And Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. So when he went to the earth, he all of a sudden saw what he wanted in heaven. So when he saw what he wanted in heaven and he was able, I'm going to deceive man and I'm going to mess with their identity. I'm going to steal their identity. He said, if you are, if you are, if you're made in God, if you're, and God just doesn't want you to be like him. That was the question. It was a question of identity. And he goes, oh, well, he just doesn't want you like him. They were already like him. But what Satan wanted was he wanted the glory and honor, wanted what they were clothed with. That's why when, after they fell and they got up and they, and because we all know according to Genesis 2.25, it says they were naked and unashamed. Uh, naked and unashamed. Some says, some translation says naked and unafraid. But they weren't naked from the standpoint of clothes. They were naked, but yet they were clothed in something. Glory and honor. So what happened? Satan deceived Adam and Eve because of identity. Then all of a sudden took the glory off of them. And now they're standing there and they hide their self from glory. They hide their self from honor. And God says, where are you, Adam? And he's like, well, we hid ourselves because we were afraid, because we were naked. And he goes, who told you you were naked? And yet God had to say, look, I'm not done with this. I'm not done with my creation. I'm sending someone that's going to bruise it. He's cursed the serpent. I'm sending someone that's going to bruise his head. Someone's going to bruise his heel and bruise your head. The enemy's out for the glory. He's out for the, he doesn't want the church to become glorious. He doesn't, he doesn't want the church to come to a place of having honor and reverence towards God. Because he knows when that happens, God fills everything with himself. Go to Isaiah 60. Eric referred to this last week. Isaiah, Isaiah 60. Mm. says, Arise, shine. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
You know, we could take this. You've heard me talk about word, the word light. The word light means fire. This word light also can be, it can be in connection with glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the, what the glory of the Lord, hallelujah, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. But you have to go back and look at verse 59. It says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. If you go back a little further, it talks about the redemption that would come to humanity. This is a prophetic scripture looking to the church as what would happen after, after Jesus came and Jesus paid the price for us. For rise and shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So what, what the enemy meant to do and take away the glory from humanity, all of a sudden because of redemption, God here in turn says, tells the church, arise and shine because your light has come. But you know what? You can be a child of God. You can actually receive Jesus as Lord, but still not shine because you have no revelation of your true identity that's found in Jesus Christ. And what I, I want to deal with this morning and is, is about God's glory being seen on us. Because ultimately, that's the point of our salvation is to us the point to say, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. The Amplified says this. It says, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you and rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Say this with me. The, Lord, the glory, glory has, risen has risen upon me. Upon me. But he tells us, he goes, arise out of your depression in what your circumstances have kept you. It's time for you to go forward. It's for some people, it's time to go forward. For some, you're just at the place where you need to rise. For some of you, it's time for you to, to walk a little bolder. Arise, shine for your light is come. Rise. And, and the thing that's going to hinder us from walking in who we are as believers is going to be the fear, the condemnation and shame that came when the glory left Adam and Eve in the garden. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 10. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful fruitful works, fruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Wow. Some people say, oh, well, the church shouldn't mess with politics. The church shouldn't mess with that. People say, oh, well, you know, separation of church and state. But most people don't even understand that. It was actually <laughs> so the church would be protected from the government, not, not the, 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 the government to be protected from the church. We don't even know what, oh, what separate from church and state, pastor. You don't even know why it was put in place. It was so that, so that the, our founding fathers knew that we couldn't, they couldn't make decisions about the church because the church is what should shape society. So he says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful, this is even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by what? The light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, now he, because now he's talking to the church, awake you who sleep. Meaning, awake you that are indifferent. Awake you that, 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 that are kind of just kind of callous to everything going on around you. He, he, say, he has to say, wake up. Wake up. I'm here this morning to tell us, wake up. You watching online, I'm saying, wake up. Yes. We can't be indifferent in the day and age we're living in because we have an assignment. We have God opportunities that we need to influence the world around us, but we have to wake up. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It says, awake you who sleep. Then it says, arise from the dead 
and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now the Amplified says this, making most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. What does this let me know? That as a church, we need to arise from the sleep. We need to arise from the dead and let Christ give us light. And then, we'll rece- and then it tells us, see that you walk circumspectly, carefully, that you're walking carefully, meaning you're walking intentionally. You're walking on purpose. And tells us, and buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. I believe the church is entering into our greatest time of opportunity. We understand the days are evil. The days are evil. Hallelujah. Arise and let Christ give you light. Hallelujah. Go to John 1. John 1. Say this, the glory has risen upon me. So it tells us in Ephesians 5, 5, it told us that Christ gives us light. And it goes on and tells us that we have that light because we need to buy up the opportunities because the days of evil. You see that? You have Christ because you have an assignment. You have Christ Christ is in your life, not just so you could say you're going to heaven one day. Praise God for that. I rejoice in that. But you have Christ in your life to give you light for a purpose. Let's look at John 1. It says, in the beginning, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, Jesus, and without Jesus, nothing was made that was made. In Jesus was life. And that life was the light of men. We could say, in him was life, and that life was the glory of men. And the light, the glory, shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. But what did John came to bear witness to? Jesus, right? So Jesus is what? The light. That through him that all through him might believe. Jesus was, no, John was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him, Jesus. Jesus came to his own, talking about the Jewish people, and his, Jesus' own people, did not receive him. But as many as received him, have you received him? But as many as received him, to them, say to me, he gave the right to be children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave the right to become children of God, get this, to those who believe in his name. Do you believe in his name? That means he's given you a right to be a child of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. I believe in his name, and because I believe in his name, he's given me the right and the privilege to be a son of God. I'm a son of God because I believe in his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, who were not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I mean, it doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter my lineage. It doesn't matter my race. It, it, it's, matter of fact, it's, it's come from the will of God that you and I, if we believe on the, him who is light, we, hallelujah, are children of God. Amen. Period. Amen. Hallelujah. This is, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now verse 16, and of his fullness. 
we have. Now, it doesn't say out of his fullness we, we might receive or one day. It's talking about we have. It, it's matter of fact that when you received him, you also received his fullness. And of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. I've received his fullness. You see, Adam and Eve entered into a place of fear, condemnation, and sin because they lost the glory. They lost the glory. They, they lost the glory. What they were clothed with, they lost it. And if they lost it, it means they lacked it. They were in a place of deficit. They were in a place of not having enough. You know, primary, the primary place where fear comes is because of lack of something. If you have, a fear of a, you have fear of sickness, it's because you're lacking health. If you're fearing in your finances, it's because you're lacking money. And I could go on and on. But the primary reason about, by why we walk in fear is there's something unknown we're not sure about. But we have to understand that when I made Jesus the Lord of my life, out of his fullness, I have received. So when I have him, I have everything. When I have his fullness, now I have fullness. He is the answer to any lack in my life. He is the answer to any lack in my life. And so if there's any area of fear in my life, he's the answer to that fear. And if I have a fear in an area of my life, it's because I'm not recognizing his glory and his light on my life. Because when you get into his presence and you get under the anointing of God, you are invincible. That's why I can, I can run through a troop and I can leap over a wall, as, as David said. But what Paul said, said all these things, he goes, but none of these things move me. Why? Because he was filled with light. He was filled with glory. He was filled with the power of God. He was filled with the anointing of God. That's why Jesus could just walk through the crowd and not be stoned or anything, even though they were wanting to kill him and just walk through. Why? Because he was filled with glory. And when you're filled with glory, fear cannot stay. When you're filled with glory, fear can't stay. But most of us aren't fully filled with the light. Because we kept reading there in Ephesians 5, it said, buying up each opportunity that the days are evil. He goes, therefore, don't be drunk with wine, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. So the answer to all lack is tapping into his fullness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my wisdom. He's my righteousness. He's my sanctification. He's my redemption. He's my healing. He's my joy. He's my peace. He's my comfort. Hallelujah. He is my everything. That's what his fullness is. You, you can't get bigger than fullness. You can't get more packed than full. There's not something else to add there. And that's why you and I need to be on a daily, daily habit, a daily understanding of tapping into him. That's why quality time with God every day of your life is important because it's in that quality time with God, you get filled up. You get filled up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next time you're battling something and you're dealing with a fear, ask yourself, what am I lacking right now? Maybe all you're needing is a word. Oh, that, can, that, 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 I need that word. And all of a sudden, what happened? Because he is his word. So it's time as a church that we operate up here and not down here. We need to come. I'm excited for the day. Wednesday nights, man. Oh, God has been showing up here Wednesday nights. Woo! His presence was so thick the last couple of weeks. It was like, oh, goodness. Mm. But we, I, I, it's, I can't wait for the day when 
Every one of us come in here full. What, what would happen if all of us come in here full? Hallelujah. My heart, every time we gather, we, we, that, that, we, that we leave full. We leave full. That's why we're about an experience with God, equipping people with the word. So you leave here and go out and influence your world. Hallelujah. Out of his fullness, his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1. Those that believe on his name tells us those will be, they would be children of God, sons of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think it's 1 John, uh, John 1, verse 5 says, God is light. God is light. Doesn't say he has light. He says he is light. God is light. In, in him, there is no darkness. So when you think of glory or you think of light, always think of fullness. When you think of darkness, think of lack. Because darkness is the lack of light. So when we talk about believing on his name that we would be sons of God and God is light, or we could say God is glory, then we could say we are sons of glory. Because we're sons of God, and if he is light, he is glory, then we could say we're sons of glory. We're sons and daughters of of light. Hallelujah. Because you will reflect your father. Hallelujah. If you look at Bryn's baby pictures and you look at my baby pictures, he reflects his father. So when we get with Jesus and we get with the creator of the universe and we get in his glory, the next thing we know, then we reflect him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse, um, for the sake of time, let's look at verse two. It says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So he's writing to a group of people. So we know he's writing to Corinth because that's who the letter's to. But he also is telling us it's to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. So it means those that are born again. It also says, with with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So have you called on the name of Jesus? Right, and, and what did John tell us? Those that call on his name are what? Sons of God, right? So this letter is written to you and me, not just to the church of Corinth, okay? Because it lets us know it's not just for the church of Corinth, but it's to the, those that have been sanctified, meaning born again, and also to those that believe on his name. And if you're born again today and you made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's you. So this is talking to you. Say this, it's talking to me. So therefore, it's for me. And I have a right to it. It's mine. Because I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. So verse three says, so what, what is he right? What is he telling us? He's saying, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse four says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God. Now, now we could look at this because remember, he's, we said in John, it says that out of his fullness, we receive grace for grace. So just for a moment, let's connect fullness, favor, and grace together. I thank my God always concerning you for the fullness of God because the fullness was grace for grace, Correct. So when we're talking about grace, we can also equate that to his fullness. I thank my God always, always concerning you. This, is, this was Paul's in his prayer life for those that he fathered in the faith, so to speak, for them to get an understanding that you would have a revelation of this. I thank my God always concerning you for the fullness of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus. 
So once again, Paul's telling us if you've received Christ Jesus, there's nothing you lack. Nothing you lack. Nothing you lack. Nothing. Nothing you lack. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> then it tells, then it has the word that. So it now, now explains a little more of this grace and this fullness that was given to us by Christ Jesus that you are enriched in everything. Amen. Woo! <laughs> I mean, in the, <laughs> enriched in everything. everything. Enriched. Go, for some reason, just go look at what this word enriched means. It means fully flooded, abounding, super abundant, above anything you could ask, think, dream, or imagine. You are enriched. Yes. So if like someone would look in the dictionary at what rich looks like, your picture would be there. <laughs> and it's not just something that's on the outside of you, but it's something that began in you first. You are enriched. You are enriched. Some people are wanting to be prosperous and they're looking too much to the outside for things to change when they need to first get enriched. Get rich in here and then let it come out here. But this is our right as children of God. This is right to each one of us here. But most of us don't know our identity. We just say, oh, well, I'm a Christian. Mm. Jesus, help me, Lord. <laughs> Man, it, I'm excited. Verse 5, that you were enriched in everything. Now, it's not by you, it's by him. Amen. Then it tells us, in all utterance, in all knowledge. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that means, that means when you get to a place, when you're enriched in him, you'll always have the right thing to say. Right. And you'll always know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yes, sir. Hallelujah. You, Verse 6 says, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. What was the testimony of Christ? It's really talking about the gospel that was preached. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kyle preached the gospel. That's the testimony of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. If they don't hear the gospel, if they don't receive the gospel, the thing is, is they won't know anything else they have a right to. It all begins at the gospel. It all begins the gospel. And every one of, every one of us, by the time we step into this next year, I'm, I, I'm wanting you to realize that you are a walking, living, mov moving, mobilizing gospel message yes, waiting to happen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That this gospel, hallelujah, would be that this gospel, the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. It was made firm in you. Yeah. Verse seven, so that, meaning there was a purpose for it. There was a purpose for the gospel. So that you come short in no gift. See, most people will operate in fear in different things. Why? Because they don't realize that they, were, they have come short in no come gift. On, come on. Because people have fear because they lack something. Yeah. And here he says, he says that, that because of this testimony of Christ, man, you need to understand there's no gift you lack. There's no gift, no gift, no gift, no gift that you lack. Hallelujah. So you come short in no gift. Then it says eagerly, earnestly, expectantly waiting for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means that if you've received the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, understand you have an assignment and understand that you are not, you don't come behind in any gift to fulfill that assignment and you're eagerly waiting and you're going to do your assignment until Jesus comes back. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that you are more concerned, hallelujah, hallelujah, about people being ministered to. You're more excited about loving on people. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. We, we talk about this time of year with elections and, and there's so many people want to make it about us and them. But the thing is, you can't minister to someone you hate. So we don't hate the transgender. We don't hate someone that, that, has, that doesn't understand their gender. We don't hate any of those. We don't hate those things. No, no, the, the issue is we have to understand that, that we have an answer on the inside of us and you need to know that you come behind in no gift to fulfill that assignment. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And we're eagerly waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse eight, who will also confirm you to the end? Meaning he'll be with you until the end. Meaning everything you do, he's gonna be right there and he's gonna confirm it. He confirms the word with signs following. You go out, you go witness and you go te testify. He's gonna confirm it to the end. He's gonna confirm the gift in you. He's gonna show you more gifts you didn't know that were in you. He's gonna do amazing things in you and through your life. And everywhere you go, he's gonna confirm it to the end. He's gonna confirm it to the end. Why? Because he is fullness. He is light. He is glory. And you are sons of glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo. As Dr. Savell would say, I'm preaching myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank mm. you, Father. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship with his son. Hallelujah. Fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me give you a new picture of this. Because when we look at fellowship, a lot of times we look at it as worship. Our fellowship, our worship, and it has to do with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eric, come here. Vic, come over here. Just stand over there. Hallelujah. This wasn't in my notes. We'll just see how this happens. But. Get a picture of this, this, that we have this fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's, yes, this fellowship is the fact that God's faithful by whom we were called into fellowship. So yes, we were called to have that relationship with God. But just as much as that, we were called into fellowship with him. Meaning it's not just me fellowshipping with Jesus and then me going out here and doing what I think I'm supposed to do. No, it's coming here and then, and we'll, we'll say, we'll say, we'll say this is Jesus. We'll say it's Vic's right. Jesus. <laughs> and so, so I'm fellowshipping with Jesus. I'm fellowshipping with Jesus. You're my brother, right? Right. Amen. So I'm, we're hanging out and it's not me. You can let go now. <laughs> it, well, it, it's, but yeah, that's kind of good because, yeah, you're, you're still holding on to me. But the thing is, is, is I want to go spend time with Jesus and then I want to go out and do my assignment. And I'm going to go minister to other people. But the fellowship of Jesus is more than just, just praying, praying to Jesus and then going out and doing something. No, the fellowship, doing the fellowship with Jesus is I spend time with Jesus, but also understand that I'm, I'm fellowshipping with Jesus. I'm in fellowship with him. And, and now I'm not just going out doing my own thing, but now I'm doing it with Jesus because he's the one that confirms it. Yes. Hallelujah. So everywhere I go, when I lay hands on someone, hallelujah, Jesus is laying hands. Hallelujah. Every time, every time, ever see, see, because the fellowship with Jesus, because this was all about fulfilling an assignment, right? Not just so we can just stay in church and, oh, fellowship with Jesus. But it's about doing it with Jesus. With Jesus. The way Jesus told you to do it. Yes. Lord, you see, you know, that you, you've heard the story of when Jesus took and he spit in the ground and he, he made mud and he put it in the blind man's eyes. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. All right. You and I, we're made of what? Dust? Mm -hmm. So get a picture of he's Jesus. I'm the dirt because that's what I'm made from. Mm -hmm. Jesus puts his presence on me as the mud. Mm -hmm. And he mixes the mud and he works in the mud. 
And all of a sudden he takes what Jesus and what the dirt did, puts it together. And now Jesus, now, now man, who is the mud, is now on Jesus's eyes and the blind man's healed. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you and I, when Jesus did that, it was, a, it was an expression on how the church, that Jesus would use the church because we are the mud that he chose to put on that which is sick to make it whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you don't know your identity and you don't know that we're sons of light and sons of glory, you'll try to do it all by yourself and wonder why nothing works and still be too afraid to step out and be obedient. Thank you, guys. Mm. 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 Wow. Well, didn't even get past. Um, uh, let's close with Isaiah 60. Still had a whole nother page here, but I mean, there's always next week. You're receiving something this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me hear a shout to those that are sons of glory. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Isaiah 60. Pretty much started with verse one earlier. Arise and shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So the glory is risen upon you. And then it tells us something, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. I mean, you can... There's some areas that we've gone into in Africa. I remember the first time we went to Tanzania. Okay, it teaches for a little bit longer. I remember going to Tanzania for the first time and we went, went to all these different areas to where we were ministering, uh, ministering to, you know, whether it was food, um, uh, items, blankets. And I remember we went into one area and uh, Joe, Joe, this was the time when, when all the men from the, the there was a Muslim vi- village we went to and the men started throwing rocks at us. And remember, <laughs> Wendy... <laughs> And Rebecca, she had that long stick because they were coming after us. She had this long stick and she started going like this. And they started, <laughs> man, good old times, man. That was <laughs> Jesus. And so, and so all of a sudden, Annette actually preached the gospel that time. We're on the soccer field. And so there was about, I want to say there was about 75 widows there, women. And, and so we're on the soccer field and Annette's preaching the gospel and gave the altar call. And we had healings. Uh, these, uh, and this was, a Muslim, this was a Muslim area. And the thing, what I'm saying about you can feel darkness. Yes. That's right. And so there'd be areas that we would go and it's like, man, there's such a peace here. And not knowing this is my first time there. And then we would go to this village and I was like, something, something's not right here. And then finally, our leader there that was in that nation for 20 plus years, he would say, he goes, I didn't want to say anything to you. I wanted to see if you recognized it. He goes, this is a Muslim area and that was a Christian area. And you could sense the atmosphere of darkness. You can sense it, right? And Annette stood up and preached the gospel. We're laying hands on all these ladies. You know, we hand out food. And as we're handing out the food, all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm seeing like, I'm starting just praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm like, I see this men started coming this way. And and, and Joe comes to me, and Joe's very sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and he goes, Justin, it's time to go. It's time to get on the bus. The thing is, you don't say, well, I got Jesus, and I... No, you need to obey is what you need to do. <laughs> it's not about... Lead. If the Lord told us to stay there and preach, we'd stay there and preach. But, but also, the thing is, is you have to be obedient to what the Spirit of God's telling you to do. And as they got closer, and all of a sudden, they, they, <laughs> they started coming quicker, and they were upset the fact that we were meeting a need in their village. They didn't like the Christian coming to minister in their village. They did not like it at all. So the next thing you know, we're, we all get on the bus this time. Next thing you know, they start throwing rocks at us. But the thing is, is there was this darkness. And, and in our world today, you can just sense darkness. But it tells us in this time where the glory is going to rise upon us, it tells us that this gross darkness would be upon the people. But then it says this. 
but the, but the Lord will rise over you. Amen. Meaning there will be a darkness in the earth. He says, but the Lord will arise over you. And what his glory will be seen upon you. See, this was written to our day. So when there's gross darkness over the people, it tells us, but his glory will be seen upon you. But if we don't know our identity in him, you'll never walk in the fullness. We have to walk in the fullness. Then it says this, verse three, the Gentiles, the Gentiles shall come to your light. So, so there's something happening in the world, darkness. There's something happening in the church. And this glory that will be seen on them, all of a sudden it says, and the Gentiles will come to that light. The Gentiles will come to that light. And get this, and the kings, lowercase kings, to the brightness of your rising. So not only is it just Gentiles, but also it's people of influence. So when the glory, when the church mimics and, and, and shines through the light as sons and children of light, then all of a sudden that glory rising will be seen upon us. All of a sudden Gentiles, those people that are confused about life, things that, they're gonna come to the church, but also it's gonna be the kings are gonna come to the brightness of what? You're rising. Then verse four, lift up your eyes all around and see. Now get this, they all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. So these sons and daughters are gonna come together and these sons and daughters are gonna become radiant and your heart will swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. So what's the abundance of the sea? Referring to the Dead Sea. It's people. It's souls. Meaning daughters will, will come from our sons will be nursed at thy side. They'll become radiant and people will flow. People will flow. People will flow into it. People will flow into this light. People will flow into this radiance. And the wealth of the Dead Sea, the wealth of the sea will be granted unto you. That's talking about people. But the amazing thing is, is not just the people, but it's also all their stuff with them. Yes, thank you, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot of times we have, the, you know, I understand there's the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just, and all of a sudden it, we still look at it as an us and them. But why not we change our perspective and we look at the wealth of the Gentiles laid up for the just, that the Gentiles get saved and they bring their stuff with them. Because we, oh, I'm going to get the enemy. So how about let's get their soul, then we get their stuff. I'm not discounting any other scriptures about that, but I, I want the souls. God wants the souls. Hallelujah. Well, I got to find a place to stop. So tune in next week for, whew, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. 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 My heart is not for you to say, oh, what a great man. I, I want you to get a whole, I want us. I'm, I'm, I'm having to grow in this. I'm having to grow and, and change my perspective about me because if I operate here, then that's the only level I can operate as your pastor. So I need to expand my understanding so I can operate here. And one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Hallelujah. Let's all go together. Let's all go together. Let's go all go up together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sons of light. Sons of light. Daughters of light. Hallelujah. Because this whole thing is about God opportunities. It's all about you leaving here and going throughout the rest of this week and being a light everywhere we go. It's being that light, being the fullness that someone else needs. 
go out there, share, share Jesus, have a God conversation. Minister life to someone. Bring them out of darkness and into light. Hallelujah. If all you can, if you're not sure how to do any of that, just say, hey, hey, come to church with me. Hallelujah. And let God and the Holy Spirit do the rest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm, stand to your feet.